Jim Sennett from Hardis, thank you. Big round of applause. So tell us a little bit about, for those people that aren't familiar with uh, Hardys and the uh, sister company and, uh, and how that rolls into CKE, give people a little bit of a, 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 a sense of scale and scope for, for Hardys. Okay. Uh, CKE is the parent company. Uh, we have two major brands. One is Hardys, and Hardys is in the eastern half of the United States. We have 470 restaurants. Our sister brand is Carl's Jr., the western half of the country primarily out of California, but a number of other states as well. Um, 425 restaurants there. When we factor in the franchise community, we're over 4,000 restaurants. Uh, we sell big, thick, juicy burgers. We sell them to young, hungry guys. Uh, that's our target audience. And we're probably well known for being the company that uses meat as a condiment. So when we do a specialty sandwich or a new introduction, we will take our great burger and then we'll pile a bunch of stuff on top of it, be it Philly cheesesteak or pulled pork or whatever it is. So that's kind of our niche and uh, it's worked very well for us. Excellent. So um, you've uh, been working with P Plants now for about two and a half years. I remember. Close that, to three, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember that summer and I'm getting all this <laughs> concluded. And I think. Um, when we started this off, it was interesting um, meeting with some of the executive stakeholders like Tom Lindblom, who was the CTO, I think, at the time. Head or, of finance, yeah. yeah. And so um, you were coming from a completely paper-based system. Correct. And so talk to us a little bit about that kind of aha moment when someone said, you know, we're a paper-based solution. There's got to be a better way of doing this. How do you pull collectively together that idea to say, okay, we're going to go for a, a new solution, and how do we kind of put our arms around what that's going to be worth to us? Can you give us a little bit of insight into that process? We had four primary objectives when we first embarked upon this journey. One was we wanted to hire the best people we could to take care of our customers. Secondly, we wanted to manage our turnover. We'll be the first to admit that a bad economy doesn't do a lot for anybody in a positive way. However, in the area of turnover in our business, it has been a plus. So we, we had turnover numbers lower than we were used to historically. And so one of the objectives was maintain that best we can at those low numbers, because our industry is notorious for having high turnover. We also, we're a little unique in that we also wanted to address the onboarding part and have a system where it saved people time and so on our managers. We wanted to have uh, a paper, we were very paper intensive in the restaurants, all the forms you got to fill out, applications and personnel files and all this. And in our business, when the drawer gets full, then it either goes behind the freezer or up in the attic or somewhere. And, and it just, paper does not work well. In, in this type of a situation and environment for us. So we wanted to try and address that. And so in our approach, we right from the very start partner, partnered up with another third party company and did an integration. So we wanted to do all the selection parts as well as address these other aspects of, of the whole onboarding and hiring and selection process. So I remember, uh, again, in those early conversations, there was a comment that was thrown out saying, you know, just by getting completely Watsy compliant, you know, we can fund this whole thing. So explain what that means in your business to, to those folks that are from a different... Yeah, I left know, out one of the most important parts. Hey, thank uh, you. I thought I'd remind you that. Watsy or WOTC credits are very important to us financially. Uh, it, it's a real revenue generator. So part of our ability in HR to sell this idea to the company and to make it happen was to be able to honestly say this is going to maximize our financial uh, return from WOTC, which we calculated, the finance department calculated, will not only pay for the program, but will make money on top of it or generate revenue on top of that. So that was the big selling point, extremely important for the success of this for us. Wow, that's, uh, that's an excellent story. So let's, let's look at some of the highlights here. Initially, we rolled out um, at Hardy's. So take us on that, that journey from, you know, when we got the contract signed to the initial kind of rollout and the learnings from that as you went through it. Well, we, you know, we started off in, in our journey by developing the profile at the crew level. Right. And that we, we had a very large number of people in, that already worked for us that took the assessment uh, in both brands. And that was one of the steps. We also, in our company, we don't do a 
annual or a semi-annual performance appraisal. Mm -hmm. We take a little bit different approach. We like to encourage our managers to give feedback on a daily, ongoing basis. So we don't do formal performance appraisals. So that was a bit of a challenge because that's part of building a profile. So we had to do a customized one-time performance appraisal, uh, which we did, and, and that worked out very well for us. Okay. Um, so we got the profile built, and then our approach with all of these restaurants and all these various locations, we did the Hardee's brand first, and then after we were finished and had worked a lot of the bugs out, then we had this uh, uh, Carl's brand, and we rolled them out second. But in our initial rollout, uh, our approach was within a district, a district is six or eight restaurants, we would uh, train, well first we started with the HR staff. They were accountable for being subject matter experts, the trainers rolling it out the whole bit. Um, so then we would pick a pilot restaurant in each district, we'd get that, we'd get it implemented, we'd get that management team up to speed, and once they were comfortable with it, then we would bring the rest of the managers in the district to that location, and we were able to train them for the most part in a live environment that way. Uh, so that worked out, worked out very well for us. So there's always people out in the field that are kind of, you know, hey, this is not gonna work, or you know, uh, you better be right, Jim, and you know, how do, we, how do you, you know, overcome that? What are the tools and the techniques you use to get buy-in in the field and make this kind of pulled out rather than being pushed from corporate? What was the kind of things and observations you had there? Well, a couple of things. I was fortunate in that the, the person that headed up operations, he and I had worked together for many, many, many years and in the past. And we had had positive experience with selection systems in the past. So when we were discussing this idea of getting a third party involved to help us with selection, he was receptive. His expectation was basically, we've had a good one in the past, this one needs to be at least that good if not better, okay? <laughs> So selling the idea wasn't that difficult, but meeting those expectations was, you know, a challenge that we had to meet. But um, so he was on board with the idea, and with that, the strategy for me was get the top level key executives involved right from the beginning so that they uh, are on board, they're convinced that this is the direction we should be going in, and then have faith that the product's gonna do what it says it's gonna do and, and, and we'll take care of that part of it. Um, and so as we went along, continued to involve the right key people, kept them involved along the way, and uh, it worked out very well, and very, this, very well. This particular us. gentleman was convinced at the end of the day. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. As a matter of fact, everybody who's been directly involved in it has not only been convinced, but has really been, been total supportive as opposed to, this is not something that we've had to resell and resell and resell. This is just part of what, this is what we do now. Right. It's just part of what we do every day. Interesting. Okay, so I uh, was looking at this uh, particular um, you know, confirmation of that. You know, you talk about surveying the, the people. We don't hear this on a regular basis of people actually going out and getting, you know, real tangible feedback from people out in the, uh, in the, in the uh, organization. So talk to us a little bit about the, the survey and, and how that, is that a regular thing that you do? Is that just on the back of this project? How does that come about? For, for me, a product like this, the true measure is you know, what's the feedback? What do people really think about it? <clears throat> it, it needs to sell itself. If it's a credible product, if it's a, 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 an effective product, it should be able to sell itself. So we really didn't do much at all in terms of gathering data about, you know, how people liked it or how they felt about it up until the point where we used it for over a year. Okay. And so we went out and surveyed the general managers and you know, and we, we put together some questions that we tried that they were not leading in one direction or the other. These were just kind of basic questions. What we wanted was their true feeling about the product. You know, do you like it? Does it work for you? What's good? What's not so good, et cetera. And the, the key things that we got that, that received the highest rating, uh, now again, think about our environment with our general managers. You know, they've got, they're busy, they have so many things to do all the time. They have these lunch rushes, these dinner rushes, and it's a very hectic kind of job. Sure. And anything you can do to impact that in a positive way is extremely attractive to them. If you do anything that creates extra, extra work for them, it's extremely negative, right. and they will resist. So we were real curious to see what their feeling was after having this out there for a year. 
So the one thing that they said they felt best about, it's all online. It's easy. We got rid of the paper. You know, it's it, it streamlined. So they were, you know, where we were worried about, these are not the most tech-savvy people in the world, although we do have a computer in every restaurant. Not all of them were great at using it. Um, but they, they, that was the number one thing they liked. It's online. It's, it's, it's easy, even though they had to use the computer, you know. Uh, the other thing that we felt really, really good about that, that was either first or second on their list of what was best about the process was now when we sit down to talk to an applicant, we feel like we know things about this person. In the past, here's an application, barely had time to look at it, and you sit down, had very little training on how to do a, a good interview, depending on how long you were a general manager or whatever and you kind of fumbled through it, and then your gut feeling took over at the end, and it was really basically, did I like the person or not, right. and, and so on. Now, they're prepared when they sit down to talk to the person and ask questions that, that, that they have predetermined that they want some clarification on about the person, and now they're thinking more about, how is this person gonna fit into my team, and how is this person gonna be a taking care of my customers? And that, that was the second highest thing that they said, we have better insight, we feel more prepared, and, and we feel by the time we're done with that interview, we know the person. We can make a good decision that's predictable that we can count on. So you look at a lot of, a lot of companies and the different companies that we, we have on stage today, and people sometimes forget that implementing systems is often not a core competence of some businesses. Some companies are really good at it, right? And some <coughs> companies, not so good. So when you look on, look back at this, you know the overall, uh, you know rollout. You, everyone believes this has been a huge success, and we've hit the goals that we, we had in mind to, when we started this out. Mm -hmm. So Tom's a happy man. Oh, Tom's a happy man. He hasn't uh, called me yet. So the finance people are happy people. We're happy people. Yeah, it's it has delivered. Okay, and has and, this changed the way you think about rolling out projects uh, in any other way? Because this has you know kind of been uh, you know, pretty pretty uh, streamlined, and you've hit every goal that you had. Yes, there were learnings that uh, that we had. If we had it to do over, we would have done differently. One of the primary things for anybody who's getting ready to do this, you need subject matter experts you know, that, that people can count on, that people can contact. That is extremely important. And, and the other thing, to the extent that you possibly can, if your people can learn this in a live environment, that's beneficial. Now again, ours is a little skewed because we did onboarding at the same time. So they had to learn double. They had to not only learn people answers, but they had to learn onboarding at the same time and how it all worked together. Uh, and, and by the way, in our company, we have people answers and we have talks, which is our vendor, it's now called Equifax. They do all the onboarding stuff, people answers does the selection. But as far as our general managers are, are concerned, it's people answers. Right. You know, yep. talks is really not something that, that they think about. It's people answers, which, you know, put you guys in kind of an interesting situation, but it's worked out very well. And your support has overcome some challenges we've had on the other side. And uh, so when you talk to our people about people answers, you're going to hear very positive things. Thumbs up. Absolutely. Excellent. Absolutely. Okay, so let's look at the study. Um, again, some great uh, numbers there. Um, you know, the turnover reduction particularly was, uh, was you know, outstanding, again, given where we started from. But if you look at the results themselves, um, you, know, you have done that quantification. You have monetized those results. So you can talk now in terms of real dollars saved and close the loop back with the executives. So again, we've got the visibility down to EVPs of operations and all the leadership functions. You know, talk a little bit about how that's institutionalized. Is that something that you have to regularly report back on, how we're progressing, how we're you know, uh, continuing to, to move the needle? What's interesting for us is, in, in terms of this measurement and return on investment and so on, strategically, again, we involve top management from the very beginning um, we felt we had identified a product that was going to do what it, what it said it was going to do. Um, we got it integrated into what we do every day. It, it is what we do, and we haven't had to sell it, you know. And to be honest with you, we did the study real, very, very recently. Okay. We've 
given them some feedback. I've really not even had an opportunity yet to do it in a formalized setting where we're at a meeting or whatever. But the, the, the great thing for us, quite honestly, has been they haven't asked over the course of this whole time. They've never asked, you know, we want to see the return on investment. We want to know, is our money going to good use? It is what we do. Right. And we haven't had to resell it. We haven't had to, to, to try and make sure that they feel good about it. It has done what we wanted it to do. Fantastic. And, I, you know, I could go on and on, to be honest. I, I can't say enough good things about this process. Well, we can stay and, longer. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we do make a point of bringing it up for conversations. When my group in, in, is meeting with our supervisor, who's chief counsel in our organization, and, and we all do report outs and so on, my report out starts with people answers. And if for some reason, and we do this every other week, every couple of weeks, if I don't start off with some kind of a people answers update or a report or whatever, they will ask about it. You know, where's the people answers update? Are you listening so, to this? <laughs> it, it's, it is, you know, I'm not getting paid by these guys, by the way. I don't work for them, but it, it, yes. is, it does what it's supposed to do, and it's part of what we do. So. Fantastic. Well, that's just great insight. I really appreciate you sharing the story with us, Jim. So a big round of applause for Jim Sonnet from Hardy. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you.